welcome to day four of the LMF Life Skills Summit. We are very excited to have you join us. Uh, so please connect, share your thoughts and questions in the comments, and get ready to get advice from our incredible guest speakers. So before we begin, uh, LMF Network, as you probably know, it's on a mission to level up the confidence and careers of women and professionals globally. The goal is to build the confidence and careers of 25,000 women by 2025, a very kind of ambitious and uh, kind of very personal goal that we have. And But the good thing is that we have the UK's largest mentoring program, an amazing hub of masterclasses, a well-established network, which you are part of. And most excitingly, we have a new product coming up uh, and launching this year, which may change the world, just saying. Um, but that is why we are hosting this summit filled with insights, takeaways, advice from professionals across industries and roles to level up your career. And without further ado, let's get started with our why curiosity is key in your career panel. So I want to introduce our amazing guest speaker today. Uh, first, we have Mam Tagera, who is a leadership coach and host of the Power Within You podcast. Mamta has worked in technology for over 20 years with companies such as Amazon, Sky, and BBC. And in her, uh, in her last role, she headed up a team of 60 uh, delivery and engineering employees across Europe and Middle East. But in 2017, she decided to change careers and become a leadership coach and facilitator to empower, guide, and enable everyone, including young people and underrepresented communities, to reach their few, full potential. She's also the host of the Mental Show uh, podcast show, The Power Within You. And uh, Maggie Chen is the co-founder of the Girls in Charge Initiative and a serial hat water. She's an entrepreneur, a non-exec, doctoral researcher, and consultant. And she's a very strong advocate for female and student entrepreneurship, as well as representation in business and policy. She tries to push these agendas through her role as chair on the engagement board of the Cheshire and Warrington LEP and her nonprofit organization, which is Girls in Charge, where they use gamification techniques to upskill women globally. And then we have Akua Opong, who is a senior associate service management uh, and user computing at London Stock Exchange Group. She's passionate about being a role model for women in STEM. And as a senior IT professional, she has a keen interest in uh, being a technical project manager with an interest with accessibility and sustainability. She is also an LSEG sponsor for Skills Builder, which you know coordinating volunteering initiatives and work experience for students and aspiration days in the UK community action team. So uh, kind of let's go in, into the first uh, question. And again, for the people that are in the audience, don't forget to share your thoughts, uh, questions for, for the panelists. So I think, you know, we are not curious enough. It's kind of maybe one of those qualities that we tend to have as children that we're trying to explore and, and, and get to know the world, but maybe when we get hit like kind of like adulthood we forgot like that curiosity leads to exploration and experimentation so can you share a time in in your career or personal life where stepping out of your comfort zone and exploring new ideas had a profound impact on your career and or personal growth let's start with with you mamta yeah, hi everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here and um, with LMF as well. Like, um, it's always wonderful to see everyone. Um, so for me, you know, I think that curiosity really kicked in. So I did change my career in 2017 and became a coach, but I spent three years trying to build up that business. But unfortunately, COVID happened. And so that went kind of kaput, basically. And um, I had to kind of restart where I was. And because obviously nothing was moving in the world. Um, so what I did was I became curious about my own learning and wanted to understand how I could enable and make people's lives better and more joyful um, as well. So I got all my books out from my library. Um, I researched, did lots of research for a few days. And what I decided to do was create a program called The Power Within You. And I delivered that to, it was like eight week program. I delivered it to my friends and family um, just to get through COVID as well whilst I was learning. And 
it was around like really kind of like think about your joy, your meaning, your purpose, uh, overcoming things like inner critics and imposter syndrome. And what happened from that was it went down really well. And I was able to then in the year of 2020, I deliver it and get paid for um, by other companies as well, which was which was amazing. Like it blew my mind that I was able to something I created, I was able to kind of deliver and get paid for it as well, which was amazing. And then that was and I kind of started to do that after like you know, a few months. Um, I then put my program onto Skillshare, which is like a learning based platform, basically. And from that, I ended up getting an email from a San Francisco company called Scribd, um, who had scouted me and looked at my program and asked me if I'd like to turn the program into an audio course. Um, and in my head, I, I really wanted to enable thousands of people with this with this program. But what happened was after working with them and going live with it, it ended up being that it's available to over a million subscribers now um, across the world, which was amazing. So just that curiosity of being able to, you know, take my learning further and understand how I can help people um, has kind of paid off still after all this time, like three years later. Like, you know, I, I can create courses now. I'm very confident in that. Um, and, and also my curiosity led me to do an MSc in the psychology and neuroscience of mental health in 2021, which also started because of this learning as well. So I think because my curiosity, because my learning, because of my questions, I was able to take it further. And I it blew my mind, all things that I'm learning at the moment. So, yeah, I think that's how my kind of curiosity kicked off, basically, in 2020. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Uh, I think, you know, m most of us during COVID, like, just tried to survive. So it's amazing that, you know, you took that kind of, like, space to to open yourself to what what else I, can I do, you know, or, or how else I can empower people. And, 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 you know, it's that's importance of, you know, kind of, like, curiosity and just kind of even, like, thinking about, hmm, you know, maybe I could do something like different or, or, or find new ways to deliver my thoughts, my ideas. And, and for you, Maggie, uh, you know, what's your kind of your experience with, with unleashing your creativity? I mean, it's an interesting one for me because I spent the first eight years of my life in China, um, a place where the education system doesn't fully embrace curiosity or creativity. It's very much rote learning. You know, you just learn the facts. And then at the age of eight, I was thrust into this Yorkshire village um, in Britain and suddenly everything changed. And, you know, I was told I was just awful at art when I was in China. And suddenly in the UK, the teachers were like, no, this is brilliant. And they encouraged and nurtured that creativity, however terrible the drawings were. Um, but one thing I realized, you know, going through the education system is that the older you get, the more narrowly confined the creativity and curiosity becomes. So by the time I got to university, I, I decided that I was not creative um, and, you know, creativity has nothing to do with me. I wasn't curious about it anymore because it's just being shut down. Um, but then I did a degree in languages and cultures, which in effect needs you to be curious about just about everything, because you do a little bit of film, a little bit of art history, a little bit of literature, you know, you're just exploring the world in effect through this degree. So that led me to be more curious academically. At the same time, um, my lecturers basically said, listen, there aren't that many jobs out there for people with this degree. Uh, and I decided to start up my own business whilst I was at university. So in terms of my background now, I run a couple of businesses, one in dancewear, one in education, and also Girls in Charge, which is the nonprofit. But in terms of stepping out of my comfort zone, it really happened about four years ago where I was really curious about what exactly goes on in a boardroom. You know, the boardrooms of organizations with millions, hundreds of millions of pounds going through them, because in my own experience, I'm just running pretty relatively small businesses. So I wanted to learn what non-execs actually did. And I went to a workshop about it and learned that actually you didn't need to be wise slash old uh, to become a non-exec director to get a board role. So I ended up getting my first board role with the Cheshire and Warrington Local Enterprise Partnership, 
which works on regional economic development and influences kind of the local policy. And that was really fascinating to me. And, you know, as you mentioned, Alex, I'm still uh, chairing the engagement board there. That opened my eyes up to one, how the boards work, but also two, how policy works, because in my own educational background, you know, that didn't exist. Um, and from there, you also learn how politics works and the kind of nitty gritty of how boards and large organizations work, um, which all of which kind of goes into how I run my own business, influences what I do with my organization, try and keep out the politics as much as possible and make things work, right? So that, you know, then led to me being offered other exec and non-exec roles, which now include being on the ethics panel of the Cheshire Police, which is a very different kind of set of things to do. And that really was just a few months ago, you know, when the Met Police report came out and it said the Met Police was institutionally racist and misogynistic. And being a woman of colour in this country, I just went, I'm sorry, what? Um, so that led to really looking into what is the police doing? How can I have any sort of influence in this? And ended up here. So being curious just leads you in very many directions. Um, some really interesting, some dead ends, of course. But I think it's just this journey through which you learn so, so much. And I think that's probably something everyone on this panel will share. I mean, yeah, it, it sounds, you know, like kind of you just being curious about one thing has led you pretty much uh, to uh, like different kind of uh, roles and even like, you know, understanding like different uh, kind of organizations. So, and, and, and I just love how you mentioned that curiosity is, is a journey. Because at the end, right, like one thing takes you to, to another or, or you're, you know, kind of, you're just kind of moving around based on, you know, you start with an idea and then like, hmm, okay, this, this didn't work out. But when I, you know, kind of like got deeper into it, something else happened, I, I learned something else. And now let me explore that. So, so I mean, yeah, and, and, and I completely agree, you know, curiosity and just sometimes uh, kind of trying to see what's behind something is what leads you to finding even what you're passionate about or, you know, kind of maybe where else you can take your career. And how, how has it been for you, Akua? Yeah, hi everyone. It's great to be here today. Um, first and foremost, it's the word curiosity because I think back to when I was a child, first and foremost, because like it's just what you're saying earlier Alex in terms of when you're a child you're grown up you're asking a lot of questions you're like why does this happen why is that over there things like that and you have this kind of um inquisitive mind where you're always asking why why how when and all that kind of thing and um even as a child I was kind of a person where I was a bit of a dreamer and like I was a bit of an explorer I would say and I remember even in class I was always doodling on my paper drawing stuff and I always kind of read a lot of books in terms of all the kind of fairy tales and that kind of thing sometimes thinking I was Tinkerbell whatever but it's kind of like as I've got older just like the others on the panelists today it's kind of like curiosity always kicks in in my mind and I'm going to disclose this I've got dyslexia and ADHD so it's kind of like um in terms of how my mind works, how I question things, how I process things, it could be slightly different to someone that's neurotypical. And so um, that's always given me that creative aspect. So as I've got older, I've always been curious about various things. And I think um, if I look back to a few years back, um, or maybe a bit longer than that without showing my age, is when I was about 25, um, I got into a stage where I wanted to try every extreme sport going. So let's say abseil, bungee jump, climbing, like orienteering, anything, I would just do it. And sometimes people would go to me like, what is wrong with you? That's quite dangerous. And I was just like, ah, it's fine. You know what, I love it. I love the thrill. And for me, that's where some of the curiosity kicked in, where it made me a bit fearless and not be scared to take risks. Because I felt like, you know what, if you could jump out of a plane, 
you, you could do anything, right? And I think, like, um, for me, it's kind of, yeah, that's always been my driver when I'm attempting anything. Never be scared of the unknown and never let fear kick in because I see it as kind of, I rather um, felt, I rather kind of in my mindset kind of scared not to test something and not be scared of failure rather than to never attempt it at all because I feel like that's like really important because in a way I always think like everyone in this lifetime has some kind of special gift or something amazing and you just want the world to see it right so always have that level of curiosity where you're never scared to take on a challenge take on a task because it makes you a better person it challenges you it gives you it adds to your personality and it gives you that courage to say like look i'm good at what i do i kind of back myself and i feel like that's quite important and it's sometimes with even the word curiosity it's kind of what is hidden behind the surface things that people don't see about you but then it can't becomes unhidden later on and so I think like, um, yeah, me just being involved in doing a lot of extreme sports over time gave me courage to do anything. And how it's helped in my career is um, where I work now, I do a lot of the charity and fundraising initiatives outside of my day to day job. And sometimes looking at more kind of curious and different ways where we could raise money for charities. So even back in February, I got loads of my colleagues to walk over fire and do this fire walk. And they was just like, what are you making us do? And I was like, don't worry, you'll be fine. If anything, there's a hospital nearby, I'll take you myself, that kind of thing. But even after that, it's kind of like, um, some of us also did an abseil off the Leadenhall building and that's like nearly 50 floors up. And I remember getting up there going, oh my God, what am I doing? But it's that level of curiosity curiosity that kicked in that made me think like look I want to raise money for charity so I want to take it to the next level and sometimes you may think oh my god this woman's crazy but then it's a curiosity that makes me feel like no I'm fearless I can take this on and I think that's a great thing to have. Cool, I might have to avoid being a work colleague of yours uh, to avoid work, walking on fire and, and doing absolutely. <laughs> Embrace the fear, Mamta. <laughs> Wait, honestly, it sounds amazing, though. It sounds amazing. Um, I, I find people everywhere. Don't worry, I'll, I'll rope you all in. Like, once <laughs> we'll go good. to Mexico, right, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. You know, whenever you guys want, like, you know, Mexico is open. Uh, but you know, I, I, I just, I just kind of want to take in, into the, the whole role of, you know, what, what you mentioned of where like, you know, it's, it's sometimes curiosity is like jumping out of a plane, but fear sometimes held us, like hold us back. So in kind of, let's just like explore a little bit of that because we also have, uh, actually tomorrow a, a panel call why why failure is the greatest teacher and 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 you know i think we tend to stigmatize and, and and just kind of not not embrace failure as it is which is like a learning experience and and, and just us expanding our, our our horizons but have you felt like sometimes fear has held you back in terms of how you know you you let your curiosity or or, or that exploration come alive and I don't know who wants to join, jump, jump in first. Yeah, I think I, I definitely felt, felt that, you know, like coming from, especially for coming from an Indian background, um, you know, and, and my generation as well, you're expected to do one job and stick to that job and then do it. And then that's it basically as well. You know, my dad did the same, he was in the same job for 50 years. So I think, I think you know, being in a particular culture and mindset as well, um, sometimes you have fear to like really be able to like take things forwards and be curious um, as well. So I think that, you know, sometimes it's a fight with, between yourself. It's like your inner self, like thinking I'm going to be, I'm going to fail, I'm not going to be good enough and what people are going to think of me and be rejected. And because of those things, you kind of stop yourself from doing that. And what I've realized is that, you know, since becoming a coach myself, being able to like think about and aspire to like reach dreams and goals is really important. And actually when I when I do coach, I ask the very first thing I ask someone to do is create a dream list. And you know, think about the dreams that you were when you were younger, for example, you know, um, Akua and Maggie spoke about as a child, how curious you are. So create that dream list, because once you create that dream list, you'll start connecting with your dreams again. You start connecting about who you were back as a child. And I think that's really powerful. I mean, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, you know, kind of uh, sometimes we're 
curious enough, but not kind of brave enough to step out of our comfort zones or, you know, kind of explore and, and, and just see what's out there. And uh, Akua Maggie, who, who wants to kind of like jump in on, on this kind of like fear of curiosity. Yeah. I would say that um, I'll jump in at this point. Um, I would say create a vision board because if you create a vision board, that kind of um, and um, it just to iterate what a vision board is. So a vision board is like let's say you set up like six different themes underneath it. So one for career, one maybe um, one area will be personal, um, something like sports and fitness. One could be finances, spiritual. Um, kind of and it kind of helps you plan out kind of what is your intentions for the year so every year when it gets to like the end of December I start looking at okay what do I want to put on my vision board for the next year and you and choose a thing word so let's say one of previous years it was um, thrive this year is intentional and what I mean by that is be intentional my goal so what is my my next three to five year plan in terms of short-term long-term strategy because if you put it on there when you can visualize something can see it it makes you kind of believe like look I can do it and then you look at what you need to get to that point whether it's learning a new skill uh, picking up a new hobby and this contributes to your curiosity but changing it into actual uh, tangible goals where you can actually achieve it and the thing is let's just say sometimes midway through the year you review your vision board and think like okay can I literally fulfill the other goals and yes you can because you still got the time and remember you got to take like you got 30 31 29 days a year but sorry per month um so basically when you're kind of putting out your goals just think what you could do in this instance and what is manageable and even if you learn something for like 30 day, thirty minutes a day, an hour over time contributes to the whole month. And that could help towards that goal that you set. So just be, and that's what I mean by the word intentional, you have the power to choose how much time you commit and to spend on each goal and what you want to achieve. So then you got to use that as your driver, but then having a vision board, whether you have it on your phone or whether you have it on your wall, sometimes actually doing it from magazines and posting it on your wall, you walk past it every day. So you have no chance to kind of overlook it. It's there for you to see as you're, like when you wake up in the day, um, like for the morning you go past, you see, the vision board behind you on your phone when you're walking to work have a glance at it and you just be like it gives you that ammunition to say yes I can achieve this yeah I mean absolutely and and, and sorry sorry to interrupt it's just like uh, also like comments and questions are coming from from the audience so I I also want to see like Maggie if you can incorporate uh you know kind of how I mean yes fear of curiosity or like fear of failure but also in I think we have kind of share a little bit on on you know kind of what you've said about sometimes going out of your comfort zone how do you find that curiosity when you feel like an imposter right like how do you even kind of like get the confidence to you know go and and, and stay curious and, and and see how that impacts your your life so if you can incorporate now imposter um imposter syndrome into curiosity Maggie. I mean, I think it's challenging, right? Because imposter syndrome, again, is touching on that topic of fear we have been talking about. It's difficult because it is literally you that is stopping that curiosity. So it is very much a mindset shift to a certain extent. Um, there are a lot of resources online where you can look at what type of imposter syndrome you have. So whether you're a perfectionist or whether you don't really ask for help, though understanding where you're coming from, where that imposter syndrome is coming from can help. And I really want to pick up on what Akua said about making things manageable. So you might under career have, you know, you want to go do this job, you want to do that job, you want to start a business, like lots of different things, but you feel like you can only pick one. But I think what COVID has taught us is that there are new ways of working. There are more flexible ways of working. So you don't have to just jump off, um, you know, leave your job and start a business. Take all of the risks. You can always start something small in your evenings. You are choosing how much time you dedicate to this new side hustle. You know, there are different ways around it to make it manageable, less intimidating and just works for you and your lifestyle. So I think it is very much about 
understanding yourself before you even do anything else so you know whether that's the vision board whether that is working out what sort of imposter syndrome you might have you might not have any which is perfect um, which is what we want to see right both mf lmf and also girls in charge you know we're very much about building that confidence so i think it really is about self-awareness and then that leads to curiosity, that leads to building a plan. Um, and it's those steps that will get you there. Yeah, I mean, I I, I completely agree, right? I, I, it's just, uh, and, and I think it has a lot to do with even as Akua mentioned, as Man said, like when you have like dreams and, 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 and goals, but if, or, or if you have ideas, but without any sort of goals or kind of, and a, a kind of end journey for like where you want to go is just sometimes even kind of uh mood to do anything because it's like okay, but what is the point of me learning a new language or exploring a new skill if, if you don't think you're gonna apply it because at the end of the day any kind of journey needs to have some sort of goal some sort of vision of why you're doing things and on on, on that uh on that note with uh, you know kind of people have been sharing the comments you know like what if you cheat all your dreams or you know uh and and, and and marcia said just keep dreaming and create new ones which is you know like something great when you think you have you know kind of completed your vision board or all the things that you've uh, kind of wanted to accomplish it's like you know go and create new ones which is great and actually someone wants uh you know wants you akua to like take them fire walking so you know um if if, if uh, whenever you do the, that again there's people in the comments that want to do that um but you know if if now that we kind of like got into whole like entrepreneurial and, and, and just like having that entrepreneurial mindset maggie at at the heart that everything you do lies this kind of like desire to create positive impact in fun and innovative ways how do you think curiosity has kind of influenced your entrepreneurial ventures and supporting particularly like female entrepreneurship? I mean, so I started my first business in the first year of uni. I had no business background, like zero. I just thought, you know, what if I did this, right? It was just generally out of curiosity to see what my own ability was. So I started that and by second year, I was on the accelerator program um within the university and out of 40 participants I was the only girl like it was really a bizarre experience it wasn't like that the guys were mean to me or anything it was just quite isolating you know you're not fully part of the banter etc um so through that journey I was thinking okay why aren't there more women in entrepreneurship particularly young women my peers why aren't they considering this um, by the third year, I decided to tackle my fear of public speaking and I started doing talks um, first to my peers about my journey through university and about starting a business. And after every single event, my peers, most of whom did business studies, would come up to me to say, what you're doing is amazing. I would never be able to do that. And instead of taking the compliment, my curiosity got the better of me and just asked, why? Why can't you do that? Tell me. So it came down to three reasons. The first was, I don't have the personality for it. To which I would say, okay, what do you mean by that? What sort of personality do you think an entrepreneur is supposed to have? Because, you know, there are so many different types of entrepreneurs. The second one was, okay, fine, um, but I don't have a great idea. To which I would ask, have you ever tried to think of an idea because they don't magically appear? <laughs> and most people would say no. So then we get to the third reason, which is fine. Even if I had an idea, I wouldn't know where to begin. And I said, there's this thing called Google. It's really helpful <laughs> as a starting point. So I realized that a lot of it came down to this um, self-doubt to a certain extent, um, but of, also, of course, support. So that's where we decided Girls in Charge, well, that was the seed for Girls in Charge. And I started talking to people about it, uh, meeting my co-founder at an award ceremony. And we had this really long chat about, okay, 
what can we do then? Yes, we can get speakers in, they can tell their stories, but their stories are not your story. How do we make it tangible for people? And so we ended up go, going, hey, you know, when we were kids, we just played and learned and somehow things happened. What if we did that as adults? So the seed for Girls in Charge, it was literally, what if we brought grown-ups to childhood, but input all of these entrepreneurial skills and confidence building? So Girls in Charge now um, upskills women around the globe using gamification techniques. And sorry, my cat is in the background if you hear lots of scratching, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> um, so, I mean, that, that curiosity has led to us building an international organization. We're in four countries. We now work with international listed companies as well and government departments. So it's been a massive journey and all the way throughout it, it's just been me and my co-founders going, what if we did something else differently? Just to see. And whenever we get new people joining our team, the first thing we say is we don't mind failure here we need you to be curious about different things. Try out different ideas you have. It doesn't matter if they fail because in that time you do it, you will learn so much. So I think curiosity is definitely a very important thing, but having that mindset of it doesn't matter if it fails is also really important. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I completely agree. And, you know, uh, like Mam Takua, whenever you want to just like jump in, 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 in into, you know, like conversations, but, you know, and, and, and what you said, Maggie, you know, about like, like people coming up to you and say like, oh my, my I'm, I don't have the personality for an entrepreneur. I do not have the, like, the great idea. And, you know, kind of, uh, Mamta, we, 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 we have like a question on that. Also, you know, like as a, as a coach and that you do help people kind of like get to their full potential. It's like, how do we even stop that kind of social comparison? You know, like how, 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 how do you know like what lane you should stay in and try with, you know, kind of curiosity and how that takes you to, to, to your kind of like next step in, in your career and, and just, you know, kind of get that kind of support and, 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 and kind of network for that. So if, if you could just like share a little bit o o on that. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's so hard social comparison, isn't it, as well? Like, you know, there are so many good things about being online and, and social media, but there's also really awful things as well that can really affect your confidence and, and, and make you feel insecure as well. Uh, and I think that that's even tougher for, you know, the younger generation as well who are constantly comparing themselves. And I think that, you know, you have to kind of decide of, of the boundaries that you have when it comes to social comparisons and social media as well and decide what's working for you. So like Maggie mentioned about that self-awareness, like being self-aware about like what is pushing you forwards and making you feel good versus what is not pushing you forwards basically as well and being aware of that. And I think one way you can do that is to really align yourself with your values. Now, values are your core beliefs basically. And if you understand what your values are as a human being, then that will guide you through the process of being curious as well. And actually I did not know I mean, I had no idea what my values were like for many, many years. And it's only through the coaching and through being coached myself that I started to understand it. And that really guided me to the right direction of being curious about being in the, the career that I am um, as well. I always had great people skills and I was always very caring and empathic. They work well in, in the tech industry when I was doing delivery and that sort of stuff as well, because I could build up relationships. But I never thought to myself that I was better than I was then. Like I never thought I'd be, be able to be promoted, I'd be a manager, be a leader. Like I put myself in a box because I wasn't confident as a person. And that changed like dramatically when I got coached and when I started coaching myself as well. So I think it's really aligning with your values, understanding who you, who you are as a human being, your core beliefs, so you can actually guide yourself to being curious. And then once you're curious, that curiosity will lead to other things constantly um, as well. I mean, I I completely agree. It's just, and 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 I, I think because we tend to see in social media or in the digital world just like one aspect of of you know kind of some people's life. You know, yeah, you don't know what you're going through, so you and 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 I've actually had like discussions, uh, for example, with Sonia or uh, you know like even with. with 
uh, with other people that we focus so much on just sharing the successes of, you know, just, uh, you know, like, oh, I did all this, but you never sometimes talk about that, you know, out of that one success, there was like 10 other things that went wrong or 10 things that we didn't get or 10 things that, you know, uh, kind of fall up, like fell apart. And, and like, I don't know, like Maggie, a quote, like, also how, how do you think you can like stop social comparison? Like how, how have you felt like this and what things that you do to kind of overcome this? A quote? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if um, you've all heard there's um, the kind of saying that comparison is a theft of joy. And I think that that's what you need to take away with you because every time you compare yourself to someone else, you're just like, oh, um, that person's doing this and that. I'm never going to be like that. Yes, you can, but you have to do it in your own lane. Don't worry about what someone's doing over there. Worry just literally stay in your own lane or the term is kind of slay in your own lane in a way because the fact is every time you compare yourself to someone you kind of like you put a down on all your achievements that you've done and just be like try to be the best person you can be and like one of my other favorite quotes that like I say this quite a lot is there's a lady called Edith Wharton and she talks about there's two ways of spreading light to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it so whatever you want to do, however you want to make an impact, always think of it that way. Like, do you want to do something to help people? Um, great. So what do you think you can do to help people, whether it's coaching, mentoring, getting part in certain initiatives? And I would just say in terms of the comparison aspect is um, there's only so much you can do as well. Because just think about it, we all have like 24 hours a day. Some people don't even sleep because they're punishing themselves to try and be this person person or that person and you can't do that because think about your well-being and also self-care is so important every time you compare yourself to someone else or think I want to do this I want to do that you're kind of like taking away any fun time you'd have and that's even why I kind of mentioned the vision board earlier because that's where I've also got a bit where I put in fun time and I won't say that abs or the fire walking because that's not really fun time that's just raising money for charity <laughs> right but to do other stuff like whether it's going to the theatre go rollerblading in the park always factor in fun time within your day or even at the end of the week I would say to everyone find like whether somewhere between like Monday to Sunday to do half a day a day where you just think of yourself do something good for you because it's so important that's the time where you recharge and get refocused on okay next week these are my key tasks I'm gonna go through and smash it because if you don't it's kind of like all this work you're doing what is the end goal at the end of the day are you going to be happy yes but to the detriment of your health then no you're not fully happy and I feel like this is key and why I say this is because like um I one of my close friends I've known her since I was 16 she lost her mum to breast cancer recently and like last week was her funeral and I remember at the service they just kept drilling into us that we've only got one life and you have to live it the best possible way and so this is why comparison is the best of joy, because when you keep comparing yourself, you're literally taking away all the fun stuff in your life and making yourself more unhappy. So it's so important to live your life to the best of your ability and be happy. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think it, it, it's right up, up your leg, Maggie, you know, like how to make, uh, you know, things that we think is, it's just work or it's just in kind of, putting in the work in, in, in a fun way. So, you know, like how, have you felt like this? Like you are kind of comparing or like there has been a situation where you suddenly go, you know what, I, I don't think I'm doing enough or, because you saw someone else was doing much more than you or, you know, kind of like, have you felt like this? And then how did, did you overcome this? Um, I think Asian kids go through this even before social media was invented, you know, all through my life, it's someone else's kid is doing this and you're only at this point. Uh, so I think it's one thing that first it's, you know, parents say that to encourage you to a certain extent, um, but also for you to see that as an inspiration. So to me, I think one, I've learned to shut down that comparison of you know, comparing and then putting myself down. And two, to use that as inspiration of, okay, I would like to be there 
or potentially just sometimes it gets too much just go off LinkedIn go off Instagram whatever it is that you're seeing it is just not worth that mental drain that it's causing right so I definitely agree you need your personal time and sometimes a detox from social media does absolute wonders and like Mamta mentioned you know if you're aligning your values and understanding where you are is it's really still about that self-awareness and making sure what you're doing is something that you're enjoying because when you are working or building a business and suddenly you realize god i hate this it it drains you you know it's not even the social comparison anymore it's just your life that is draining you so really understanding that what you're doing should be enjoyable whether that is your job whether that is making sure you have time for yourself and you're enjoying that part like every day there should be something enjoyable because otherwise it's it it really drags you down and i think over covid we saw a lot of people having mental health issues because we were so confined in what we could do and i think that should be a wake up call in terms of expanding your life to beyond work um she says the absolute workaholic um, but beyond work try something new every day it doesn't have to be massive you know like cooking a new dish or something something simple and something that you can add into sprinkle into your everyday life that's the sort of thing you want to be looking at right now and then once in a while when you have time for a holiday or a bigger chunk of time you can take off that's when you can try fire walking skydiving bungee jumping whatnot <laughs> um you know you have to build up to those things i think i mean i i i completely agree and you know like uh, also kind of the people that are watching us like are agreeing about you know, kind of trying to find ways to to get joy out of life that has nothing to do with with uh, with work for example marcia says you know like definitely regular social media detoxes and making time for fun is key which you know i think it it also gives you that uh kind of opportunity to explore to think to uh kind of even make a stop in 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 the way and realize that you know maybe there's something that you've always been curious about or or want to learn and then you kind of uh you now ha have this space or you have created the space in your day in your life to to do that and kind of before we go into kind of like uh, another question there's a, a a question and I'm sorry if I'm pro mispronouncing your name Kiara and how do you choose your uh, career that you are curious about despite seeing peers choosing traditional uh, routes that could be more stable career-wise and financially. So uh, who, who wants to jump in on this question? Yeah, I think that, um, I think it's easy, isn't it? It's an easier thing to kind of like go, I'm going to go for that banking job, the finance job, whatever it is, because that's what I'm used to. And that's what I see everyone doing as well. But ultimately, how happy are you going to be if you do that role when you're curious about something else as well? And, and the thing is, we feel that we limit ourselves to think that we won't be financially stable or career stable, whatever it is. But that's not true, I don't think, um, because I'm certainly in a, like, you know, I'm self-employed. Um, I, I've taken a risk. Um, I don't always have things coming through. So I have to work doubly hard maybe to get, like, get business and that sort of stuff as well. But to the value that I receive when I do my work, the way that I feel inside and my heart like just wants to explode because I'm providing that value and I feel warmth as well makes it worth it. So it's being that persistent, it's being resilient, it's being able to like, you know, if that's the career that you'd like to go through, you know, you you absolutely must, you know, be curious about that and understand what it entails. And of course, when you see financially stable, like we have like have rent to pay, mortgages to pay, that sort of stuff as well. Like for me, I was in a stable job, but I didn't give it up until I was able to kind of like have enough savings and be sensible about it as well basically as well like not like throw everything in, in the out, out there but like be sensible about what you need um, as well and balance it up but certainly you can be curious if you're in a, in a sort of stable role anyway you can be curious about other roles and other careers absolutely completely agree uh who else maggie akua you know kind of how how do you choose a career that maybe you are curious about but you know maybe it's not that traditional Path that everyone takes I mean I think it's interesting because 
yes, there's a particular role that you can be interested about, and then you need to balance that financial aspect, right? So then potentially they might have this role in a bigger corporate uh, place with higher salary. It's just about once you know exactly what you want to be trying out, shopping around, you know, as we do with everything in our lives, you should shop around, see what deals there are. Um, but also I think when you're young, it's okay to just try different things you don't it, you know you're not choosing a job for life and now i think the rate of changing jobs is like every year or every year and a half so it's not a job for life it's a job for like a year or, a year or so so you can test it out if you're curious about it there's always time to go back into those traditional routes and chances are the people who go into those tradi traditional routes in two years time they're probably coming out to try the more curious and creative roles anyway so it's just about where in your journey you are and then picking what is right for you I, I realized I, uh, Akua and I unmuted at exactly the same time. I got there <laughs> first, but Akua, over to you. <laughs> it's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like as if we were having like a coffee or tea and we were just like chatting. So, you know, Akua, like, <laughs> what, what, what's your take on that? You know, like how, how do you choose a career? And, 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 you know, like I completely agree is, and, Actually, last year on the Life Skills Summit, we had a a, a, a panel called like a career, a career path doesn't define you because I think we have kind of changed our mindset of like you have a career for life and then you just like follow it and you only have one chance to choose. But the thing is like you can, like career paths are not linear. They're not, you know, like just an upward uh, kind of like line. It, it, it can be any any sort of of, of shape. So Akua, like, uh, what are you take? What's your take on that? Yeah, um, just to let the audience know, because all the even though we're in different locations of panelists, we're all kind of telepathic now. We've got such a vibe that we can just meet ourselves at any time, ready to speak. So that's what it's about. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, in terms of the career path, um, even myself, I've gone through different strands. Like um, when I was about sixteen, I wanted to be a pediatrician. Um, about 18 to 21, I wanted to join the army, be an intelligence officer, first responder, um, worked for an automotive company. Then I got into technology and things like that. So I've gone through different strands and different career kind of paths. And um, I would just say that um, it just depends on what you want to do in the moment and what you're passionate about. And even though, let's say, for instance, I didn't go into um, being a paediatrician and medical side of things, um, alongside different careers, I did a lot of um, kind of like first aid training and things about and worked with even St. John's Ambulance. So in that way, I adapted those skills. And then um, also because like I kind of wanted to take a route where I work with kids in some capacity where I work now, even though I'm in technology, I do a lot of outreach programs with kids because then I still give back in that capacity. So there's a way you can adapt it in your kind of current role where you could still give back or kind of do something on the side. Maybe it's a volunteer role, or even what Maggie talked about, of um, kind of board member, non-executive -direct directors with charities, that kind of thing. You could still give back in that capacity. So never close it off. Look at other opportunities outside of your day-to-day -day role, because in this day and age, everyone's got a secondary job or kind of a side hustle anyway. So then that's where there's the add-on. So you're kind of doing your main job and then something else that maybe focuses on your passions. So never ever think that, oh, just because I'm in this job today doesn't mean I'll be in that job again in 10 years time it varies depends on the individual as well I mean that, that's right it's, it's just uh I think we 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 get too hung up in in the I should I need to choose right I need to make the right decisions that we don't even like allow ourselves to just explore to kind of even take bad, bad decisions and just being like you know as as I could mention like I wanted to be this and that and and just because it didn't happen the way you wanted it, like that curiosity of I actually want to learn, you know, like uh, like uh, first aid, it, it just allows you to find new ways to keep on your your dreams alive and and you know kind of choose different ways of of even like how how you live your life. And I'm very much aware that we only have like ten minutes. Well, 
uh, 10 minutes left. So I, I kind of want to kind of wrap thing, this with, you know, your top advice on, you know, as champions of curiosity, lifelong learning, exploration, what advice you would give to professionals on how to integrate curiosity, creativity, and lifelong learning into their career journeys. And another kind of aspect that, you know, it, it come back in the, in the comments and a question from the public is, how do you even like kind of do this when sometimes you do not have that network that helps you or, or, or kind of like give you the support of exploration? Because as you, you know, like Mamta and Maggie ha have mentioned, sometimes you're even like culture or household or like the, tra like the traditional kind of teachings of your, of your home, home life impact how you even kind of like think about you know your your kind of like your future so what how you can kind of like stay curious integrate this into your career with that element of what if you don't have the network to kind of keep on moving and and supporting you uh, whoever wants to start as a cool mentioned you know like we are now comfortable enough to just be like no i'm gonna go first I'm, I'm happy to start. I'd say, um, don't be afraid to, even if you find someone on LinkedIn or even if you go to one event and you feel like, oh, that person, what they said resonated with me, just even send a message going, look, hi, I met you at XYZ event or I see you post something on LinkedIn. Can I have a quick chat with you and then extend that chat to even if you want to ask them to be a mentor or coach for you? Because that's the power of kind of meeting people in different communities, etc. And I feel like that could be a starting point and always kind of work on your elevator pitch. And how, what I mean by that is how you introduce yourself, because that's key. Those first this first kind of like 60 seconds of how you say hi my name is xyz this is what i do because it then sticks in people's memory you can make it fun elaborate as you want to because that's how they'll always remember you and like yeah just to give a summary in terms of what alex mentioned about whether it's curiosity creativity lifelong um i'm gonna quickly do some quick fire quotes so the first one in terms of curiosity curiosity will conquer fear even more than bravery will and that's by james stevens and then in terms of creativity um expand your horizons don't be scared of what if if this doesn't happen just always think about kind of don't just have a plan a have a plan b c d e f however you want to do it because we've always got to have that think about like um playing the football game or something like that i'm saying that because football's on at the moment but think of that like if you go into a game thinking okay plan a is gonna like beat that opponent it's not always the case what if they come at you and they're more offensive than defensive you've got to think of okay how can we tell tackle them with plan B or plan C. So always have like another kind of strategy or backup clause. And the final one to kind of wrap it up in terms of lifelong learning is similar to what I said before, just adding a little put, um, time every day to learn something new, whether podcast, video, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, Maya Angelou always talks about lifelong learning and teaching. And it's not only what someone teaches you, also teach it to someone else and create a ripple effect. And I'm going to hand you over to Maggie. <laughs> OK, I have been picked. <laughs> Thanks, Akua. Um, so I have two tips, actually. Well, two activities. So the first one is a mindfulness activity, actually. And it's before bed every day, ask yourself, what have I learned today? It, one, keeps you present and mindful, which is the point of the exercise. But actually, two, it leads you to be more curious, because if you come up with blank the next day in order to answer that question you will actively try it and learn something whether it is something actually useful for your career or just some tiny little fact you saw on the internet you will more likely remember it because you're asking yourself what have i learned today the second thing is to try different hobbies they may not necessarily be extreme sports it can be pottery or something more uh, less extreme and by doing that, um, I definitely champion trying different and weird and wonderful new hobbies because one, it's quite fun. And two, you meet very different sets of people at those events. So someone mentioned, what if you don't have the support network? Well, the, the 
one thing you can do is go out and meet more people and you don't necessarily need to meet them at professional events. Some of the best networking I have ever done has been at very informal events because that's when people aren't there with a very specific goal. I want this from you. But it, you can then let the conversation flow naturally. You can get to know people. You can become friends. And, you know, you just don't know what will happen. And at worst, you've tried a new hobby. You hated it. You hated the people. But that's now off your list. You can go try something else, right? So, yeah, Mamta, <laughs> you're last. <laughs> um, so so inspiring. Um, very from Akur and Maggie. I love the quotes. Definitely going to take some of those and remember those. And love that mindfulness activity as well. Definitely going to do that as well. So thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Um, I, I would say from my point um, is that, you know, it, like if going back to if you don't have a network and to keep you moving and going, you can definitely be your own cheerleader um, as well by honing into what you need um, as well and being able to work on yourself. And, and that starts with that self-awareness of understanding I would say definitely definitely recommending that dream list really to hone into like what you were curious about what you wanted to do as a kid um as well I wanted to be a zookeeper when I was little and, and recently my partner booked a zookeeping experience I loved it I wouldn't be a zookeeper anymore though but <laughs> it was a great experience just for a day um but it's really like pushing that forwards and also getting to know your core beliefs, understanding who you are as a human being. And, and if you don't have the network, there's so many resources out there that you can do. There's these amazing online panel events, like feel free to you know, really reach out to people that you are curious about, ask questions um, as well, and, and really like be able to like understand that you are, you are, you know, your biggest supporter, you can achieve what you want to achieve. You know, you have the ability to do whatever you want to do in this life. And I think always remembering that is, is key. I, I, I completely agree. It's just, you know, kind of, you guys have given so many kind of like great advice, tips, takeaways. And uh, I think my computer might have frozen. Okay, we're back. Uh, and, you know, it's, I think that's why we created kind of like this, this space for conversations, you know, with the LMF Life Skills Summit, because I don't think sometimes we give ourselves enough space to even have these conversations you know kind of get insights get kind of uh learning and experiences from from other people so you know like feel free uh, you know for the people that have joined us to kind of reach out to all of us in case you have any question in case you want to ask a cool where, where's the best way to do bungee jumping or you know kind of uh or, or even you know kind of like get maggie on like i don't know how my my, my best idea is or if you're looking uh, and also because I've, I've been personally kind of like uh, benefited from that like with Mamta on, on how to find your core beliefs and, and how you can you know like get your 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 life moving forward and just you know kind of taking that moment of to be curious about what's next for you so with these final thoughts we end our why curiosity is key in your career panel and as Marcia said the time went so quickly that, you know, it, 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 it didn't feel like we have been like speaking for an hour. It just feels like we just started 15 minutes ago. And I just want to thank you, uh, Mamta, Maggie and Akua for your time, takeaways, quotes uh, and, and exercises that we all can do to encourage curiosity in our lives. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, remember to get back. Uh, online in an hour at 2 p.m. for the next panel, which is how to be more confident. Uh, and, and we're going to have more brilliant speakers coming uh, on. And don't forget to follow us on social media to build your career and confidence. And for everyone listening and watching, including our guests, uh, we want to give you access to our new product for free before we launch it to the market. So if you're interested, do sign up in the form that the team has been sharing in the comments. And we'll be in touch. See you soon. And again, thank you everyone for listening, for sharing your thoughts, your 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 questions. And uh, we'll see each other very soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.